Welcome to the Intern Whisperer Live, the show all about internships and how to excel and do well. Reminder, listeners, you can call us live on the air. The phone number is 407-582-2906. You can also chat with us online through the Intern Pursuits Facebook live chat. Coming up on this, intern, on this episode of Intern Pursuit Live, end of semester looking for internships? Sign up with Intern Pursuit or contact Isabella at Isabella at internpursuit.tech. We have our guest, Daniel Boltero, college to career expert, podcast host, and author of Mastering College to Career. So you can find us on Facebook. Intern Pursuit is on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can find our Intern Pursuit game on Facebook and Twitter. And you can listen to us live on MixLR.com forward slash Valencia College Radio. Follow Intern Whisperer. You can watch our show live on Facebook. Be sure to look for us and follow us. And you can call us live on the air. Again, the phone number is 407 582 and you can chat with us online through Intern Pursuits Facebook Live Chat. Our face, first patron, Pixel Crawler. Pixel Crawler is a suite of tools that audits, monitors, and historically tracks the pixels implemented on your website. There are strong dependencies built on the consistency and accuracy of the data collected by tracking pixels, and Pixel Crawler will help ensure all data is being collected as intended. Their website is pixelcrawler.com. Thank you, Pixel Crawler, for being a patron of the Intern Whisperer. So our Intern Pursuit news. Students, if you want to join our startup team and be an Intern Pursuit student influencer or brand ambassador, go to our website, internpursuit.tech forward slash careers. Check out our job descriptions and apply to be a part of our superhero team. And we're inviting employers of all types and sizes to be a part of our early adopter program. Early adopter employers will be accepted to participate. And you can contact me, Isabella, at internpursuit.tech for more information. Check out our social feed by the illustrious Jonathan over here in the studio <laughs> with us and Melanie. They are actually creating that content that's going out there for what I learned in Employer for Change Stories and Intern Pursuit Startup News. We were accepted to the Female Founders All Raise Boot Camp starting in August. So that's big news. Okay, so Daniel, welcome to the Intern Whisperer. It's a lot to go through to be able to get to this part, right? <laughs> I know, but I am so excited to be part of the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, I could not be more thrilled. So we're going to go ahead and lead off. I know Mel's going to kick us off. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to start off by first asking you, where do you go to college and what was your major? And did you ever do an internship? And what was that like? Definitely. So I pretty much grew up in Orlando, Florida, and I went to Valencia Community College first. So I got my AA in Valencia and used direct connect to go to University of Central Florida. So I wasn't the best student in terms of grades, <laughs> so I actually loved and enjoyed my time at Valencia. In terms of graduation, I graduated with a double major, one in marketing with a professional selling track and management with an entrepreneurship track. And I did four internships, guys, four, four internships. Wow. Wow. And I started <laughs> off when I was in Valencia, I did my first internship with Derek Investment, and it was actually pretty funny because it was a one-man show. This guy, was a, he owned a million-dollar company. He worked out of his house in Owlsworth, mm -hmm. and he was just very successful at what he did. And what that company was is, you guys ever watch QVC or any of yeah. the shopping networks? So yeah. people who had ideas would go to him, and if he thought the idea was good, it's kind of like an essentially Shark Tank, but everything's done by percentage. Mm -hmm. And you would bring an idea, and if he believed it, the manufacturers in China... Uh, the camera people, the people that answer the phones, yeah. even QBC, they all took a percentage of sales. So there's really no cash involved except building the demo. And so it was pretty interesting to see how one man can make b millions of dollars in revenue out of his office. Yet at that time, which is around 2010, he didn't even have a cell phone. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. That reminds me of that movie Joy where um, Jennifer Lawrence and she was the character. She mm. was portraying whatever her name is in real life. Um, and it was mops, selling mops, and she had to go and do a demo. And it was exactly like what you described. She had to go pitch it in a room, and if they liked it, they'd put her on the air, and they set it all up. That's crazy. Like, what you buy, and I don't know if things have changed now. It's been a while since I was I knew about the industry. When you bought something on, like, on a TV channel, you would get it in, like, five weeks. And the reason why is because they used your money to pay the China factory, yeah. and so you would get it from China. <laughs> and so... 
that's kind of how you were able to run a business extremely lean. And so that was my first internship. I did an internship in a marketing company, writing blogs. I think I was the worst intern they've ever hired. I am a horrible <laughs> writer. Um, it was one of those inter internships where I quickly realized that this is not what I wanted to do. And I thought marketing was it. But at that time, marketing wasn't social media. It was all content based blogging articles it was all the more you could write the higher you are in google mm. that's how it was back then um and my wife did that internship for me so all that assignments i would do it my wife would write it and then the next day i'd be like i'm done um, <laughs> oh that's the goodness. only that's the only way i passed but i was still horrible they, they probably hated me they're still around <laughs> revenue performance i am so sorry <laughs> if you're listening I, um and then i did an internship with another startup and then i did an internship with enterprise a uh, rent a car Wow. Oh, they're a good company to work with. They have such a great management training program, and the way that they treat their customers are amazing. I, I fell in love with them. I was reading a lot of books, and one of them was Exceeding Customers' Expectations. Mm -hmm. And they talk about yeah. enterprise way of customer service. Their management training program work your way up. Mm. And I, I love the internship. It, it gave me so much, taught me so much work ethic that you as a college grad can still go wash a car. Like, that's part of it. And so I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. They're nice people over there. Okay. You were part of uh, student organizations. Uh, which one were you a part of? And why did you choose that one in particular? Yeah, so you come in from Valencia, and they have student organizations of Valencia, but it's a lot smaller school. I feel like Valen Valencia is a lot of... The students here are just more transactional. Like, you go to class, you work, you, you know, you're working through class, and you, and you leave. At UCF... A lot of students are like full-time students. Mm -hmm. There's hundreds of student organizations. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know. I didn't know anything. My mom didn't go to college, first generation. And so I was at UCF my first semester there, walking around the first couple of weeks. And there was a group of students that said, hey, we're having an event and we have free pizza. That's why I joined, right? <laughs> um, and it was called uh, Delta Sigma Pi. And it was a business professional fraternity. And at that time... I was looking for an organization that would provi provide me like-minded individuals, right? I was struggling to find people that were had a growth mindset. I felt like a lot of times my high school friends still you know, didn't want to grow, like they were stuck in their ways. And so when I joined Delta Sigma Pi, I felt like I gained a family. And to this day, it's probably one of like those decisions that started out as free pizza, but completely changed my life and the way I look at it. Okay. Mm, free pizza, yum. Okay, so... Daniel, what do you think your purpose is in life? And I know the answer to this, but I know our listeners don't. So I don't know if you do, actually. Okay. Well, so, it surprised me. Um, my purpose, what I think is in life, is to help people reach their full potential. No, you've told me that. Oh, I know that. Okay. You said that. Yeah, I heard I you speak. So right. I, I really love, like, one of the things that hurts me the most is to see wasted potential. Mm -hmm. When... Not, I'm not even kidding. This week, I was walking to the mail with my wife and my dog. We were walking to go get the mail from to our house, and I see a, a, a student that he was like, he said, "Daniel," and I obviously don't recognize him. This was two years ago, and he had graduated UCF one year ago, and he was working part time wow. with a college degree. Like, and he had a son. His little son was riding around on a bicycle, and I'm telling you, I t my wife saw. She's like, my whole demeanor changed the rest of the day. Like. Because nothing breaks my heart more than seeing wasted potential. Like, he didn't need to go to college, incur thousands of dollars worth of debt to see that. And so the way that I spend my time now is trying to help college students fill, fulfill their full potential. Like, when I was talking to you guys before the show, yeah. it was like, what is your goal? Like, where do you see yourself in five years? Because I want to make sure you guys get there and fulfill what you came to this world to do. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. All right. Yeah, I also want to ask you, that kind of leads into our next question, what is your dream job? My dream job is helping college students land their dream job. But tell yeah. them the story about what was your dream job before that, how yeah. you got over, uh, I guess, PepsiCo? So m when I was growing up, I guess a little backstory is my dad died when I was three years old. So I don't remember, I don't know if you remember anything when you were three, but I definitely don't. And so all I know about my father is the stories that I hear from my family members and my mom. And he was a very successful business person. And he was able, he was helping run like this family, our family company. And that company took care of everybody in the family, like Hispanic family, like 20 plus people. Yeah. And so once he passed away, after he passed away, 
Um, he was very smart, but he also wasn't that good at sharing how he ran the company. So five years after he passed away, the company went bankrupt. And that was a big reason why my mother and I had to move to the United States just to, for having a better opportunities to pursue that American dream. And so growing up, my whole thing is how can I be like my father and essentially be able to help people? And, and I knew business was it. Like he did it through business. If you're running a company, the way you treat your employees, the way that you can make money to impact your family. So I always said to myself, I either want to own my own business or be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Mm -hmm. I think that is massive Im impact and responsibility and power with that. Right. And so when I was doing um, a lot of reading and more than anything, audiobooks, I would go and rent audiobooks. I started listening books from CEOs and successful business people. And I found that a lot of things that they had in common was the fact that they came from sales and they talked about how you in order to be a successful business person you essentially need to do two things mm -hmm. you need to learn how to sell your your ideas your products and you need to be able to manage people because everything else you can you can outsource you can outsource a marketing company you can outsource an accounting department you can outsource everything else and so that's exactly why i picked my majors and when i was graduating college i had multiple job offers which is uh, i know exactly what it takes to get a job and one of those jobs was with uh, PepsiCo Frito-Lay. And that job was to be uh, running a sales team. So right out of college, I was going to be managing and running a sales team. So it was exactly the skills that I wanted to do. Right. And so that's exactly what I did right out of college. Yeah. And you made it you made it really big, too. I know that you shared previously what those uh, growth sales, the sales growth was. Yeah. So um, I started out as a sales associate. And then I moved into district manager, small format, which is the 7-Elevens, the Walgreens, essentially anything that sold less than $3,000 a week in chips. Uh, so those are your smaller stores. And then my boss says, hey, you're making such a great impact. You need to be doing larger stores. So the Publix is the Sam's Clubs, the Targets. And then from there, I was there for about a year and a half. And I got them promoted to an account manager. Um, so I was at PepsiCo for about six years, but when I left PepsiCo to pursue the master in college to career, like build my own company and helping students, I was managing over a hundred million dollars in yearly sales. Wow. So it was wow. it was massive, like a lot of responsibility for someone who's been out of college for just six years. I think that was a really good training ground for you for what it is that you're doing now. I mean, one hundred percent. I I remember this. Like I was think about. I was telling you guys I was an entrepreneurship major, and so I had professors and I, and I had a great relationship with those professors mm. and I would go and sit in their office hours which is something the students need to start doing more um, <laughs> go to the professor's office hours and I'll sit with them and I'll go over with them the options that I had mm. here's the job offer that I have at that time I had a, a business and I have a YouTube video that's out there from my class project where you had to create a business plan and it was called you bike it was a bi mm. bicycle rental system mm. so when I was talking to my entrepreneurship professors I would say I have offers from A, B, and C company, but I also have this bicycle rental system company that I want to start. And you know how yeah. big that is now. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. It is so yeah. huge. It's everywhere. Place, it's everywhere. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, it's everywhere. Um, <laughs> th that is when I learned that it's not about the idea. It's about the execution. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and all of my professors, every single one of my entrepreneurship professors, you would think they would be like, go start you bike. What a great idea. They all told me the same thing. Go work for a Fortune 500 company mm -hmm. for five years because the best way to reach any goal is to learn from someone who's done it. Right. And who knows more about business than a Fortune 500 company? Mm -hmm. They're obviously doing something right. And so I, it's like, you know, you guys know I'm going to listen to you guys. So ditch that idea. And I, and I think it, it, it differs on the situation. But at that time, I felt like that was the best. I, like I'm going to listen to their advice. And I went to PepsiCo mm -hmm. and I learned so much. So much on how to manage, how to the importance of processes and procedures because I think that's the most un underestimated thing that students don't think about running a business, but it's the most important thing. Like, let me ask you guys a question: Who here thinks they can make a better burger than McDonald's? Yeah, I could. Right? Like, <laughs> Probably. Could, don't be yeah. shy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you go to McDonald's because it's the best tasting hamburger in the world? No. Mm -mm, no. But yet, why do they sell the most hamburgers than anybody else? It's a go-to place to go. Convenience. Well, yeah. Yeah. Let's keep convenient. talking about it. Well, why? Why is it? Is it convenient? Is it? What else? Why do you go to McDonald's? We're on every corner. Every yeah. corner. Yeah. Location. Real estate. Location. Location. Thing. And does it's the burger change road. the taste when you go to a different location? Mm -hmm. Or is it, is it the same? same. You yeah. know exactly what you're getting. Yep. Right? So mm -hmm. what, what makes McDonald's 
excellent or successful business is the fact that they have processes and procedures that no matter where you go in the world, that burger is going to taste the same. So you know what you're expecting. Mm -hmm. And I think that as a consumers, people don't like taking that risk. And so they're going to go somewhere they like and trust. And at least it might not be the best burger in the world, but I know that it's good enough for me right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what to expect. You know exactly <laughs> yeah. what to expect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think that was a big learning lesson because people think like the branding of McDonald's is what sells the burgers. Well, the, the branding is, but it's because what you associate that Golden Arch to be, mm-hmm. which is a consistent good burger, okay burger for, right. I, I know what I'm French paying for. Yeah, too. the French yeah. fries, whatever that might be, but there's a consistency. And I would have never learned that if I wasn't in a Fortune 500 company. Mm-hmm. That's very true. So you kind of answered the question about uh, what was the birth of your entrepreneurial dream. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to jump over to our next question. Let's talk about your podcast. I've been a guest on your show. Thank you for having me on your show called Mastering College to Career. Tell us about your show, your guests, and where we can listen to it. Absolutely. Thank you for even bringing that up. My podcast is called Mastering College to Career and is a podcast all about helping college students take away that fear of graduating without a job. And instead, it's all about giving them the information to land their dream job. And so the podcast, I've brought in chief human resource officers from Fortune 500 companies. I brought the deans of universities. I brought people who are, are in charge of college recruitment. I bring students to share their success stories. I bring students to share opportunities that they had that they've learned and grew from students that graduated college with a job i also talk a lot um have a lot of solo episodes so every monday i do an interview and then every thursday i have a solo episode talking about topics so the for the episode that's coming in tomorrow Mm -hmm. is how to be successful at a summer internship so a lot of students right now are in the summer they're doing internships so i'll talk about relevant topics to help students succeed to ultimately give them all the tools they need to get a job and Anywhere that you can listen on podcasts, Spotify, or iTunes. You know it's changing to Apple, right? Mm-hmm. It's changing to Apple is no more I- iTunes. Yeah, they're going to be changing to, to yeah. yeah, yeah, to Apple yeah. Music. So people will find you, just so you know. <laughs> it, it's going to be a transition, but you don't say iTunes. It's going to be going over to Apple. They've had announcements coming out this week. Yeah. I'm not a good reader, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm just giving you a heads up so yeah. you'll know it. Well, so Spotify, Apple. Stitcher, Apple, Apple, Google Play. Yeah. Um, but definitely, if you go to Apple, right, now Apple, leave a review. That would help. <laughs> <laughs> that is very, very true. So, okay. And um, we have to go into a spotlight announcement. Right. So artistry.io is a product customization tool for e-commerce stores that increase revenue, customer trust, and business efficiency. Artistry's robust product customizer allows business owners to sell personalized products in an existing e-commerce store and automate the processing of custom orders. Their website is artistry.io. Thank you, artistry.io, for being a patron of the Interwhisper Live. Back to our show. I want to ask you, um, what are a couple of really good podcasts that you recommend for entrepreneurs? Podcasts for entrepreneurs. I love the Gary Vee show. Um, he, he's awesome. All right? Yeah, he's awesome. You know, if you've never heard of Gary Vee or if you've never listened to Gary Vee, here's my advice. Give it at least four episodes because at first, a lot of people get the wrong impression of Gary Vee. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's yelling. He yeah. uses profanity. Yeah. But like, that's not the, what you're supposed to pay attention to. It just takes a couple, like, I remember when uh, somebody introduced me to him. This was probably about five years ago. You should listen to this guy, Daniel. And I listened to one episode. I'm like, man, why are you sending me trash? <laughs> like, this guy. <laughs> and then after a while, I'm like the number one fan. I love Gary V. Um, other than Gary V, I, I really think, um, for me, like, in terms of entrepreneurship, I don't. Masters of scale. I've, you know, I don't listen to a lot of entrepreneurship podcasts. So I love that one. That one's Reed, Reed Hoffman, and he brings in all types of amazing entrepreneurs that have these these stories that you dream of, that you hope for in your life, like Zuckerberg. He'll bring in um, Tesla, you know, any of those, like what's his name, Musk, yeah. Elon Musk. So he brings them all on the show, and they share their stories, and it's such a well-run show um, there's like some music in the background. There's these sound clips. I mean, you are so engaged. It's such a good story that's going on there. 
that um, you can't help but leave and definitely have knowledge, but feel that you were entertained also. I would tell you now that when you were saying that, I have to listen to that show. And have you guys heard of Entrepreneurs on Fire? Mm, right, no, no. Johnny D's. I forgot. I'm, I'm definitely saying his name wrong. So, Entrepreneurs on Fire. He used to have one episode a day, mm-hmm. and he would just interview all day. And he's probably one of the first people who went to podcasting. His podcast is huge. Top. John Lee Dumas. Yes, John Lee Dumas, and he is, he he's amazing. Like his story is amazing. He slept in his car as he was building this business, and now he's massive. Like massive, massive, massive. And the last one is Pat Flynn. Mm. Um, his his podcast is um, wow I I forgot but it's Pat Flynn he has a um, he has a couple of podcasts now but he, he talks about the business of entrepreneurship as a you know as a one man business in a sense and not necessarily talking about a big organization but it's like somebody like me who has my own podcast and it creates my own content it, it and create it's all about passive income. Oh, so about, Tell me his name. I'll look it up or whatever you remember. Pat Flynn, pass, uh, the passive income or something like that. I think it'll come up. Pat Flynn, passive income show. I should just look at my podcast app or my Apple Music account now. The smart passive yeah. income? Yes. Okay. Smart yeah. passive income. Yeah. Okay. There he is. So I'm adding that to our notes just so we can kind of remember to use that when we're doing some of our promotions in our social mm-hmm. social feed. So that's why I'm jotting those in there. Okay, and Pat Flynn. All right, so, um, gosh. Okay, so who are three... Wait, did I skip you? No. Okay, it's my turn here, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. (laughs) Who are three great leaders that have inspired you, and why? Yeah. They can be living or dead. They can be people that are famous (laughs) that you don't know, or it can be somebody that, you know, you grew up with. You know, one of them... Is Abraham Lincoln. Oh, good choice. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. I had to read a book, and it was called uh, Leadership on Lincoln. Mm. And he was a, a person who, and I, and I don't know all the, I, wrote, I read this book probably like 10 years ago. But it, he talked about how he f- ran for office over like 10 times and didn't get elected to any. Mm. And then he became president of the United States. And it, and it, it talks about a lot of his leadership traits and how he was just a very, you know, asked for advice. He, he, he led outside of the White House. He didn't spend a lot of time in the White House, like where a lot of presidents, like, lead from just the White House. He would go in the field and talk to his soldiers. Before he was angry and he, w- he would write letters to his generals, he would, he would write them out of anger, but then never mail it to them. Mm-hmm. And so he never burned the bridges. And I just... The, just the way that he thought, um, smart, man. <laughs> smart man. Yeah, no, a smart man. So Abraham Lincoln's uh, one of them. I think the second one, I think it would say my dad. Like the way that he was able to manage his business and his marriage, um, and the way that I hear stories about him, I think I learn from from him from the stories that I hear from him, mm-hmm. whether they were real or not. I think if people talk a lot of all the great things about the people who passed away, and you never really hear it the bad. So I'm just, just gonna think they're real. Um, and, and I think um, the third is Gary Vee. I, I love how he, his view on life, how he's realistic and how realistic in a way of saying you should do it and you could do it, but you have to put the work to do it. Right. And the optimism and the empathy and just how you can win in business being nice. Mm-hmm. That you don't have to be um, manipulative or evil right. and stepping over people to get ahead and does he still have that show where you go down an escalator and you do a pitch? No, I don't think so. Is that Gary Vee? I don't know. I, don't I thought it was so. him. I just okay. watched his cartoon, though. Never Little Vee. Oh, yeah. he, has a car- he, has, oh, he does have a cartoon. He does have That's a right. cartoon for kids. Yeah. Saturn, Saturdays. And they don't say bad words, right? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. All right. Well, All right. those are good people. Yeah. And quite frankly, I think it, mentioning your dad makes perfect sense because that's how you led, is that mm. that was a something that really influenced you to be able to make your own dream come true and be able to make a difference. And you saw how business was a, a powerful tool. So I think that it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think... The stories yeah, help I, shape your life. One hundred, Especially when I started going back to Columbia more and hearing the stories of people that my dad helped 20 years later. I didn't go to Columbia for nine years. Mm-hmm. 
And 20 years after he passed away, these people that my dad, whether he helped them, got them a job or anything like that, will come just to meet me because they were so grateful for what my father did. Wow, like, wow, that's a huge legacy. So you talk about that, and it's like, which is very aligned to what Gary Vee talks about. Like, Gary Vee's biggest thing is how many people show up to his funeral. It's not about how much money he makes. Not, the most important thing is he thinks that you measure success by how many people show up to your funeral. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that's true. Right. And right. lastly, uh, tell us about your book, uh, Mastering College Degree, and what, uh, where can listeners obtain a copy? Yeah, so my book is done right now. I have a couple of you know students beta testing it because my goal for this book has always been to make sure that this book helps the students, right? And so what I found out when I was reading all these books on the transition from college to career is that all these books were written by two people. Where they're either written by a professor who you know who's been in Acomedia all their life. Right. It, in the, the the job search inside of Acomedia is completely different mm -hmm. than it is when you're going out and working for a business. Mm -hmm. Or it has been by people who are very successful at business, but they are they have trouble c writing the content in a way that's relatable to students and understanding the struggles that you guys as students are facing right now right. and getting jobs. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to write a book that combined my personal experience from being a first generation college student and graduating with multiple job offers, right? My experience in leading campus recruitment for UCF for a Fortune 50 company mm -hmm. and all this countless hours worth of research that I've done, all these books that I've read, hundreds of people that I've interviewed for my podcast and outside of my podcast and create this book that's easy to read, that's relatable to students, that students can actually, is a step-by-step -step guide mm -hmm. to go from I am lost to have a clear plan and strategy that I can execute. And if I listen to this book, you will graduate without a job. And so um, right now, because I want, I want that to be true, I have a couple of students reading it. Um, and it will, be, it will be available on Amazon early fall, so in August. Okay. Mm -hmm. He uh, posted his cover. It's really dynamic. It's uh, on LinkedIn. And if you guys haven't connected with him, you definitely want to connect definitely with him will. on LinkedIn. Um, I know that that was something that Calvin talked about last week. It's like, are you on LinkedIn? Pull out your phones. Start doing it right now. <laughs> we can't do it in here. The firewalls are fierce, and it's tough to do anything on our, on our phones. So that would be a first thing. And then the other thing I would uh, make sure that I share with using his system is he's getting it set up so it's going to be an online system, not just the book, right? People can actually sign up through a website and be able to get tools and all of that good stuff. Yeah, like I think my whole business strategy of mastering college career as a brand, it's all about helping students land a dream job, right? For them yeah. to get their full potential. And what I wanted to create, I wanted to create a product suite that will cater to every single type of student. And so if you're a student that, you know, you have a pretty good idea of what you want to do and you just kind of want some supplementary um, materials, the podcast out there for free, 100%, it's free for everybody. And I don't hold back on the knowledge. So I really believe on like what Gary Vee says, right. put out your best content for free. And then if you want to kind of like a little a, a more roadmap, because uh, the podcast is zigzagging, is there's no organization depending on the guests who I have, depending on the time. Um, if it's summer, I talk about summer internship. If it's fall, I'll talk about career fairs, right? Mm -hmm. So there's not, it's not organized. The podcast is not organized. But so if you're a student that you want a logical order to follow, a step by step, here's a book $10, $15. Not sure how much it'll end up costing in the end, but it won't be more than $20. It's very short investment. Put everything out there for you, all in a book. Then if you're a student that, you know, this is a very important decision. Your first job out of college will real, literally will set the foundation for your professional career. And you want video explanations. You want to have access to me because what I'm doing with my online course is it'll be extremely similar to the book. Like I'm not holding back on the book, but it'll be a series of about 20 to 30 videos talking about every single concept. And on top of that, there'll be resources and worksheets that will help you fill it all out. And how it is, it's set up as a module. So it is a hybrid course where you do the modules on Monday through fr to Thursday. On Thursday, I'll have uh, like live Zoom classes, uh, like video Skype classes, mm -hmm. where I recap the material and I'm accessible to answer any questions that you particular might be having issues. So if you, yeah. we talk about Marvel, like how do you get a job at Marvel earlier? <laughs> we could talk about it on a one-on-one -on -one basis because it's a lot 
I'm able to then add my knowledge and connections to that. And so those are the three steps. Essentially, is free, $10, and then you have the online course, which is a little bit more expensive. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I know that that wasn't something that we had talked about. So before you came on the show, you also shared some really good news that you have two students that were able to get a job. Yes, I that is like makes me the happiest when I receive the jobs, uh, uh, the news about this type of things, or when I get letters or thank you emails from students that have listened to my podcast and gotten jobs or students that I mentor. And so this past week alone, about three weeks ago, two three weeks ago, two of the companies or two people that I know that are working for companies, they're like Daniel, we're I'm hiring, like we're we're hiring two different companies. And so I said, let me think about who I know that could be looking, that be a good fit. I'm all about creating those win-win situations. And this week, two students, or they're not students, one of them still a student, graduates at the end of summer, and one of them graduated in December, receive uh, offers for full-time jobs. So winning, hashtag winning. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I want to make sure, oh, maybe that's another hashtag that we should use. But I don't know if that's a trending one, but we'll see. That's always trending. Yeah, I <laughs> hashtag so. winning. Yeah, I'll go ahead and add that one in there. I think uh, we already covered like hashtags uh, that would help to trend what it is that you're doing there. So the other question, I'm going to throw one out there, is we were doing some, you were talking with the other people that are in the room here, and you asked them some questions. Do you want to go ahead and use them as some of the guinea pigs so that people that are listening to our show can have a little bit of a sneak peek as to what it's like to work with you? Definitely. So I will tell you guys this. I don't work with a lot of students one-on-one anymore. Like I'm, I'm definitely trying to create more of a scalable, a scalable model. model because I want to help more and more students. Um, but a lot of times when I work with students, I, I make it, you know, your transition from college to career as simple as possible. And I try to talk about it in the most relatable way for students. And one of those topics that I talk about all the time is that finding your dream job is an open book test. And I think the biggest problem the students have is that they are not understanding or taking the time to understand what tests they are taking. And so when I was here earlier and we were talking mm-hmm. you know, to Corey and Mel, and we're talking for, to everybody, that was my question to them is, I'm trying to identify and get them to be clear on what tests they're taking. Mm-hmm. And so let's start, Mel. <laughs> what's your dream job? Let's talk about it um, all over again. Well, I kind of mentioned before, I'd really love to work for a company like NPR and be maybe in a producer type role, kind of like what I'm working on right now, or maybe a company like Vox as well, and also dabble in editing too. And so I guess the follow-up question that I would ask for her is, what what are the qualities that those companies are looking for for those jobs? Well, um, I think definitely experience is one, and I also mentioned um, editing, so definitely trying to look into how I could practice that and maybe what softwares and stuff that maybe they require applicants to know, just looking at qualifications. And what was one thing that we talked about that was like we said 80% of students are doing X and 80% of students should be doing what? Well, I think you said 80% of students are doing job searches, right? Mm -hmm. Online, Online, yeah. yeah. That in 20% are actually making personal connections, and it should be the other way around. Right, and so I guess what I encourage all students to do is apply online. You know, I'm sure yeah. that's if you, that's what most students do is you know that's I want to go. Scalable that's way. the scalable yeah. way. But like when you have such a, a shotgun approach of just sending <laughs> your resume to 100 companies, you yeah. don't. You're not the ideal candidate for all. You cannot be the ideal candidate for all companies. So it's mm-hmm. about creating that target list and understanding what they are looking for specifically. I know Jonathan had a more clear set of companies, right? Mm-hmm. And so let's talk about you uh, okay. for a second as well. Okay. You had a, you wanted to go work in all these media companies like um, Viacom and Turner. Mm-hmm. And what do you think what you can do now to set yourself apart? Definitely start making referrals and uh, building relationships now, um, whereas – not doing it until, you know, I get out of college, you know, so. Start yeah. building up that LinkedIn Start building, list. Yep, yeah. that too. Yeah. yeah. Building connections and everything, yeah. Definitely. And how do you think you can build a relationship with someone that you don't know? De- well, LinkedIn is definitely a great tool. Um, looking for, you know, filters for the jobs of interns or 
uh, just different employees that you can talk to and say, what can I do better or how can I critique my resume to suit the needs of that company? So that would definitely mm -hmm. help. What do you think you can do that if you were to do this X, right, mm -hmm. that all those companies can't say no to you? Hmm. He's going to think about it. Like, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so like, it. let's think about it together. Like, This could be a brainstorming exercise. Right. At the end of the day, what skill or like, what if you created a cartoon for mm. ca ca uh, Cartoon Network or you create your own cartoon and you put it on YouTube and that cartoon started getting popularity, getting popularity right, yeah. in a sense, and you were able to showcase your skills mm -hmm. or if, if you wanted to go into this. He sings. He sings. Yeah. So what if it was a singing cartoon? Yeah. Right? And, and it's, I think if, it's a definition of insanity, mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So if you do the same thing that students are doing, then you're going to get the same results. And that same results is here's some national statistics. 85% of students graduate college without a job. Wow. Right? 85. Those are national statistics. 40% of them never work in a job that requires their degree. Wow. So if you do what they do, what every student is thinks they need to do, which is create a resume, mm. apply online, and wait. It's passive, yeah. What results do you think you're going to get? The same results that 85% of students get. So you need to do what that 20 or that 15% of students are doing differently. Mm -hmm. And those are creating career portfolios. Right. Like going into the interview, knowing the answers to what they're saying because you've already interviewed 20 people in the company to understand what they're looking for. Because it is said that companies, when they hire wrong, cost one to five times your first year salary. So the biggest issue the companies have is the fear of hiring the wrong student. Mm. So if you can mitigate, mitigate that risk and lower it and eliminate it, you become the ideal candidate. And you do that by being so passionate about working for Marvel that you've read every single com uh, comic book and you've interviewed 500 people to your Marvel podcast. Like why wouldn't Marvel... Marvel would probably buy you, buy you out, buy your podcast out. Like yeah. I think... When you can be so passionate in about five companies and just know so much about them, mm -hmm. then you become the ideal candidate because they know that you go work for Marvel and DC Comics tries to pay you $50,000 more a year, you won't go because you're not motivated by the money. You're motivated by working for the company. Right. That becomes a solid investment for Marvel and becomes a no-brainer. And I think is that I did Marvel as an example because it's easy for students to visualize what you can do as reading all the comic books and interviewing every per person who works in the movies. And maybe you start out with somebody who doesn't like who you've never heard of, and you work your way up to the directors and to the producers. But um, I think that's the idea of kind of what I talk about a lot. It's how that's do you do that where to I you? think you and I we both intersect because on the intern pursuit platform, it's about helping students to be able to identify who they are personally, you know, a personality type, so they can hone in. Also, I one of the things that I teach them is what can you take off of somebody's shoulders? When you offer that up, that's huge because now you're standing out from everybody else. You're able to say, oh, I came here to work, and you're showing what your value prop is when you come in the door. So there's a lot of things that you can do that, but the more you understand yourself, the direction that you want to go, whether it's you know your personalities, what you like, what you don't like. I've seen that you've been asking them what it is that their goals are, and it's really one of those things they need to think strategically about how do I get to that job before I graduate. And you took four internships, and that was really, I think, a smart move. Uh, statistically, students do take two to three, four internships now because they're still trying to figure out who they are and where they fit into this equation. I liked, um, originally when I got out of college, I took a job and I was with a big company, uh, Lanier, at the time. And then I've worked for, for the, um, the Nature Conservancy. And what I've learned is I, I didn't like the big one. I wanted to come to a smaller environment where I have like real relationships with people. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to feel like I was a passing ship, very much like what you're doing here. Absolutely. I think, you know, I, I think there's three th types of internships, in, in my opinion. I think there's discovery internships where you're doing the internship to discover, Agreed. to see if this is where I want to do. Mm -hmm. I think the second one is experience internship. It's, an, it's 
I'm a little more certain this is kind of where I want to go. So I'm just trying to get relevant work experience. Mm -hmm. And I think the, thir the third type of internship is get your foot in the door internship because it's mm -hmm. a lot easier to get into a company through an internship than it is to get a full-time job offer right away. Right. And and doesn't mean that one internship can be all three. Like you can start off as a being a discovery, realize you like this field, and then realize that you love this company, and, and in one internship figure it all out. Yeah. It doesn't happen all the time, but it could happen. Mm -hmm. And it could also be a discovery, right? And then I like the job, so now it's also experience. And so I think uh, I think students do need to be more strategic with their time. Yeah, yeah. Just because you're busy, just because you take 12 credits, have a job, have an internship, doesn't mean that it's the right job, the right major, or the right internship. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree totally. So, well, we are... Surprisingly, we're at the near end of our show. It, it always creeps oh. up on us. Oops, wait. Yep. Oops, sorry. Um, so, hold on for me. Um, no, go ahead and play it. Oh. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> you were right. Just so you know, you were right. Okay, so at Spotlight, Val Valencia College, we want to say thank you for letting us be on your campus. Q, we love you. I know he came into the room. That was awesome. <laughs> he came to say hi to us. We have the state-of-the-art social broadcasting studio here. We have a great atmosphere, and we have knowledgeable staff. They all help us here, and it's a fantastic environment. So as we get ready to um, wrap up our show, we're going to do our shout-outs. That's our usual routine. Jonathan? Uh, I would like to shout out my family, um, parents, um, and you guys as well. I love being with you guys um, always in the studio, so thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Mel? Um, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Corey, our cameraman right over here. Yes. He's been helping me a little bit with uploading some things for the show and really helping me strengthen my some of my technical skills. So Excellent. Yeah, thank you, Corey. Corey, you get to do a shout out real fast. Uh, shout out to everybody in this room, especially our guests. Have a lot of knowledge. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. Daniel? Really, the shout out to you guys, too. Everybody in yeah. this room, you guys have been amazing. It's been very awesome to come and work. I love this environment. You guys are, are amazing. And a special shout out to Isabella oh. for this amazing platform that you have and for your wanting to help so many students. Thank you. And my shout out again goes to, we're feeling the love in the room, right? It's a kumbaya yeah. moment. So, but also to all of our listeners, we really appreciate that you're listening to our show, that you're following us on the, on all of the, um, the podcast channels, which is now Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and Google Play. And then also to all of my intern pursuit and pivot team. I could not do any of this without all of you people. You make it look easy. So how can you contact us as, Contact us, info at internpursuit.tech, and you can also go to our website, internpursuit.tech, and you can reach out to us by phone. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn, and you can listen to us live on mixlr.com forward slash Valencia College Radio. Follow Intern Whisperer. So as we close the show, we want to thank you, our listeners. So good night. <laughs>